Welcome to the Digging Deeper Podcast, brought to you by New Hope Church. My name is Matt, and I'm so excited to dive into today's topic. But before we get there, let's go around the room and see how everybody's doing. Jay, how you doing today, buddy? My feet are cold. <laughs> <laughs> you got uh, snow on you. I, I know, right? I'm so I was uh, very surprised to see how much snow was on my car this morning. That's fair. But yeah, I know. I'm doing, I'm doing really good, man, uh, even though it's snowing. Mm, mm-hmm. but, uh, <laughs> even though it's snowing. Yeah, but I'm doing really great. Can't complain. Awesome, buddy. That's cool. That's cool. Lindy, how you doing? I'm great. <laughs> I got a few it. messages this morning saying, did you pray for this? This is your <laughs> fault. <laughs> I still love how we get up and we're so excited about the snow and we're taking pictures and then you go on Facebook and all the Canadians go, you look at this. <laughs> That's true. It's, true. it's so funny. <laughs> oh, man. No, but um, yeah, we're doing doing really great and mm-hmm. excited about the pivot yeah absolutely <laughs> the pivot of the week we'll right. I sh- we should we'll have we'll a pivit of the week yeah. before yeah. we're we'll done podcast just on that <laughs> so yes uh looking forward to driving <laughs> on sunday right. cool awesome toby how you doing man <laughs> i am doing fantastic thank you matt awesome. um yeah every morning i just wake up and go man god is good and yeah truth feeling so blessed in in everything in this church and in canada and my family mm-hmm. and just God's provision uh, in our lives in general. Yeah. It's amazing. And um, friends and brothers and sisters. And yeah, man, just Sweet. at a really good space. Uh, cool. Not feeling depressed at all. That's good. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Nate, how you doing, buddy? The exact opposite. No, I'm just <laughs> 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 oh, I'm not gonna lie. That was a it was a tough weekend, it and was. Uh, it, it kind of flowed from a tough other weekend, you know. So yeah. it's like I uh, feel like we're um, doing a lot of work that is life sucking, if that makes sense, mm-hmm. like bylaw COVID work yeah. that is not like the life giving type work. Truth. But I have to say, I don't think I in I have only been in pastoral ministry for like five years, but. I don't think I've ever been as supported and encouraged by our church family as mm-hmm. I have been in the, this season. Um, yeah. Just shocked by like you know people reaching out just to tell us that they're praying for us and that they love us and caring for us, and uh, I've really actually felt that. And mm-hmm. so awesome. I don't know if that's that would be a cultural change that I would love to see continue because it has yes. been uh, <laughs> like as soon as I get kind of uh, frustrated with having to write an email or make make another phone call to public health or whatever we have to do. Yeah, I get something from somebody just. Yeah, loving on us. And mm. uh, so mm. that's been really cool. It's felt like the unity in all of the pivoting has only grown stronger, yeah. which is really cool. That is really cool. PT, how you doing? That's good, Nate. Thanks. I was thinking about the drive-in service, and I, I looked on the website, and I couldn't find out. Like, it's an A&W drive-in service. I was trying to get my teen burger, <laughs> coney fries, and diet root beer. They're on sale right now, by the way. <laughs> I, I can't wait for Sunday. I can't wait. It's going to be so good. No, I'm doing great. Um, awesome. Yeah, it's yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I, indeed. What everybody else said, the snow mm-hmm. and God is good and yeah. crappy stuff is happening. But uh, overall, f- for me, I'm just like overwhelmed by God's uh, kindness and goodness and blessing. And um, I, yeah, I hate to see that, that some folks are mourning so deeply, but I know that the Holy Spirit will, will wrap his arms around them. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. Truth. Truth. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm doing. I'm How doing, are you, Matt? I'm doing all right. How are you? <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. Uh, no, I'm doing. I'm doing all right. I'm kind of with Nate this week. It's been. It has been a rough couple of weeks of, of just dealing with a lot of extra stuff that is draining. Um, like this is the interesting thing in ministry is that there there is sometimes this tension of you get to do things that just fill you up and encourage you and and you get so excited. But then the flip side is you you have to do things. You wade into some stuff that just drains you. And, and it's so important in those times of draining to surround yourself with people who can encourage and lift you up. And I've been very grateful for that uh, over the last couple of weeks, uh, you know, because there have been some moments where you're just frustrated and going, man, here we go again. And yet people come alongside and they're like, just that encouragement, that, that fellowship of encouragement um, in Christ. So I've been very grateful for that. There's been some rough moments, but it's been also very encouraging. Like you said, Nate, just to have people surround you and come alongside you and you know, and lift you up through that. So, so yeah, overall doing well, doing well. Thanks. Awesome. Yeah. So I actually wanted to, uh, dive into something that you had mentioned on Sunday PT, uh, great sermon, by the way, it's always interesting tackling the concept of death and discussing that. Um, I thought I'd start off cheery. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's it. Like when you can walk away from a sermon on death and be encouraged, like that's impressive. People like the one on hell too. They did. <laughs> Go figure. It's good. 
It's good. It's it's amazing <laughs> how when you bring Jesus to these things, it just changes the whole perspective. But, or talk uh, about them at all. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's fair. That's an excellent point. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> but you did you did make a statement on, uh, on Sunday's sermon, and I really, really liked it, and I wanted to kind of spend some time here. So because Ecclesiastes is in the Bible, we get to see loud and clear where the pitfalls are when despair and depression come to visit. How we navigate such winds can make a world of difference. How you help others navigate such winds can give life-saving hope. I think that is such an incredibly powerful uh, statement and perspective on first the book of Ecclesiastes, um, but also on, on kind of like we have to actively engage when these things come along. Uh, when, you know, those pitfalls of despair and depression that you talked about on Sunday come along, we, have a, we actually have a responsibility to, to dive into this and, and engage with it. And so, so the question that I want to start out with this morning is, you know, how do you navigate those, those pitfalls of despair and depression? How do we, how do we, you know, how do you kind of navigate thoughts that distort our perspective? Because that's really what it is. Despair and depression, it's really just a perspective distorter um, <laughs> on reality when you, when you kind of get into it. So how do we actually navigate that when, when it happens? Because I think with everything going on in the world, that is kind of a big issue right now is the distortion of reality, um, which arguably is always the case, but I think it just seems really loud right now. So uh, maybe Jay, I'll get you to start us out, buddy. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I think uh, there's a lot to be said, obviously, on this. Um, mm. I think it's really important to remember the kinds of creatures that we are, that we're not just minds in a vat, mm. but we're also people with desires, longings, and we're social. And so maybe the first thing I'll say is, Navigating a pitfall, like one of the best ways to do that is to always ensure that you're not alone. Yeah. Right. And you're surrounded by people who who aren't just going to tell you what you what you they think you need to hear or you think you need to hear, but who are gonna who are gonna remind you of the truths of Scripture and of a biblical worldview mm -hmm. and of a, and of an eternal perspective, is which is exactly what PT talked about on on Sunday. Yeah. And, um. So I think first things first, I would say. You navigate that by making sure you're situated in a, in, a, in a deep community that when you're down, they can bring you up. Mm -hmm. You know, like when you have a lack of faith, you can you can inherit, you can borrow some of their faith, yeah. right? Because again, we're, we talk about this a ton at New Hope, and we're going to always talk about it because you don't believe us a lot of the time. <laughs> That's uh, true. Is we are so deeply social, mm -hmm. and and to. To isolate from that is to slowly start to kill yourself. Yeah. And then to let those thoughts, those longings and those desires that are disordered mm -hmm. not be so so constantly being in community and talking about what's in your head. Yeah. You gotta yeah. talk about it. No one can help you with something you're not talking about. And just talking about it a lot of the times is a great first step mm -hmm. in moving forward. Absolutely. PT. Um, what was the question? I don't know, that was two minutes ago. <laughs> so, yeah, I, it, it, I tried to word it in such a way that we would look at depression and despair as uh, coming into our lives to invite us to follow them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, these are invitations to, to go down the rabbit hole, to let go of the joy, to let go of the peace, versus like we, so many people talk about my anxiety, my depression, like yeah, they own yeah. it. And I would just caution on that. Mm -hmm. Don't identify yourself with those things. Identify yourself with Christ. Yep. So, yep. yeah, depression comes. I mean, my, my experience was every day at 4 o'clock, depression would come and invite yep. me to follow it, and I didn't know why, and I had to struggle with that. And um, mine was an easy one, unlike Elaine's five-year postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. Totally, you know, a different level. But mine was like I needed to stop working and I needed to change. Yeah. And uh, and just uh, and not think about work anymore. I was done, and the idea of continuing to work for another four or five hours just brought me into a depression. And so I'd start making supper and play some music, and uh, it just changed my my whole day. And that's changed my routine now forever. Mm -hmm. But these are invitations to go to bad places, and and yeah. Satan lies and says, "Now now you must go there," and uh, we need to you know not bite, not take the bait. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. There's more to all this than that. Yeah, yeah. That's one little piece, right? Oh, no, it's one good. little piece. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nate, what are your thoughts on this, man? Yeah, well, um I think it's uh 
it's hard for us to wrap our head around the idea that we we can't see clearly because mm-hmm. we always think we see everything clearly. Yeah. And um, my my kind of take on this or from my, my experience is that the cloud is so heavy you don't see the other side of the storm. You don't see anything else but the cloud, the, the wall of despair in front of you. Mm-hmm. And um, it's kind of a, a maybe a testament to the lack of pers- perspective we actually have. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's the reality of, of despair. It's the reality of depression that it sits like a wall in front of you. And, uh, and so I think we need people to speak perspective back into our lives, whether it's spending time with God and getting that perspective back from him, um, understanding our etern- eternal hope and perspective there, but uh, also to kind of pull us out of that, that moment. Someone shared with me when I was going through, um, you know, m- my, my struggles in, in, um, in high school that you have, you have almost need to have like an out of body experience to pull back and like, look at, look at life differently. Cause mm-hmm. when you're in your head, you want to, you want to just get rid of all the thoughts and, my my go to most people's go to is just to quickly medicate and, and numb the the, yeah. the 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 wall that's in front of you to block it, and when we do that, it it feels like what we want to do, and we know it's not what we should do, and that we, yet we do it. Yeah. And what yeah. feels like what we don't want to do, like go and get help and ask people to pray over you and to be in community even when you're feeling despair. Mm-hmm. That's what will help. We know it will, but we don't do it. Yeah. We want to sit in our basement with a beer or whatever yeah. and medicate. No, for sure. Yeah, um, I really like what you said. Like it's a, it is it's a distortion of mm-hmm. our reality, um, and and I found that gratitude is a great way mm-hmm. to yeah. fight mm-hmm. depression yeah, the mo- or anything Love going that. down. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I think it's kind of it's funny like the way you grow up. No, eat your food. There's kids in Africa. Have, <laughs> who don't have food, that you know? That was you. That <laughs> so was you me, were the, guys. You were the kid. <laughs> Thank you for eating your food. We did because otherwise we would have ended up, it really ended up at, at my lot. place. Yeah. And so, thank you, thank you. I don't want your old food. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> but what I was trying to say, it's, it's exactly that. Like, oh, mm. what do I have? What is going for me? What has yeah. God done for me? Yeah. Um, and that that changes your whole mindset and attitude so quickly. Um, mm. And you know, in my prayer life. That's kind of something I always try and start out with. God, thank you first. Thank you for your provision and mm-hmm. thank you for everything you have done. Um, and and that just I don't know. That's probably why I'm a pretty uh, positive person in general. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, Lindy. I think as someone who's who suffered from depression quite badly when I was a teenager or a little bit like probably nineteen, early twenties. Um, for me, one very powerful weapon that I really found makes all of the difference is the Holy Spirit. And Mm -hmm. I feel like we tend to forget about the Holy Spirit sometimes. Like the word says, he is our comforter. And I just remember (laughs) that um, these days, whenever I feel down or depressed, it's um, I can call on the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to be honest, I don't think there's been a time when he didn't call me. And comfort me. Mm-hmm. And um, no, it's not always going to be a, a, an immediate thing that's going to change. If you feel like, I, I remember I was depressed for probably almost two years. But then I have to add also the realization. I, I saw a psychiatrist and all of those things. But the answer is Jesus. It'll always be Jesus. There's a lot of stuff you can do. There's a lot of books you can read. There's a lot of people you can go and see, yeah. which is amazing. But Jesus healed me and Mm -hmm. that made all of the difference and it was just a continuing of trusting him um of being in his word and of trusting the holy spirit and asking the holy spirit to comfort me and to call me and then there was a moment of of freedom and i can honestly say like i said since then i feel like i've only had what i would call the symptoms like i feel like Mm -hmm. the enemy tries we all struggle with things right and i feel like the enemy will come back with the symptoms and Mm -hmm. we have the choice to embrace those symptoms and and say, but this is who I am and this is what I struggle with, right? So it makes sense that I'm just going to keep struggling or just go full on war and just go, this is, this Mm. is, this is the enemy trying to get me down and remind me of what I struggle with, but I'm going to stand on God's word. And I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit's never disappointed me. And um, every time I call on him, he calms me, he helps me. But yeah, sometimes things take time. Um, mm-hmm. And that's that's also okay. But we're not going to stop. We're not going to not going to give up. Yeah, absolutely. Man, I think that's 
that's the most important thing. Amen. Divine encounter, right? Mm-hmm. You you got to have that. Without yeah. that, you're powerless. Yeah. Um, I think one other one other strategy I would just say is because you know one of the things that depression, anxiety, and these kinds of things usually do to you is 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 force you to to look inward, mm-hmm. constantly obsess in your own head, look inside, look inside, look inside. Yeah. And sometimes what I encourage people to do is think about how you could bless someone else today. Like, how can you love your wife a little better? How can you encourage your kids a little more? Like, stop obsessing with yourself yep. and yep. and and think about how am I going to love those around me? Mm-hmm. You know, one of the things in Colossians where, you know, Colossians, you get this, this comparison. You're like, put to death the old self. Put to death all these things, right? Mm-hmm. And put on the new self or put on the... You know, this created in the image of God, and all of the all of the things that says right after that, how you do that is bear with one another, love yeah. one another, forgive one another. It's all about doing things for others. Yeah. And and if you get your yourself out of your own head for a little while, you might actually find some beautiful space out there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, I I've been doing this for a while, so. Uh, I've been seeing trends for a long time, and I think mm-hmm. I'm not sure it's good. I'm glad you guys are younger, because I'm getting <laughs> really annoyed at Christians, um, non Christians. I expect craziness from. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, they don't have Jesus, and they don't yeah. have the scriptures, and the, you yeah. know. So, but but Christians long for a diagnosis and a prescription. Mm-hmm. They're so happy when their child gets a diagnosis and a prescription. And if you study any mental health, they will always tell you the prescriptions are fine, but they will not solve the problem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Prescriptions can help get you to a place where counseling can begin to be effective. Yeah. But to solve the problem, you need counseling. So fine, get a prescription. I, I got nothing against that. But that's not the end of it. The next, the solution is counseling. Now the question is, what counseling? Mm-hmm. And you know, I hear people say, don't give me another Bible verse and tell me to pray. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, what do you want then? Mm-hmm. If you don't want a Bible verse, do you want Freud? you want Skinner? you want Young? Who do you want? Well, who, whose script will you read and trust your life to, your mental health to, your little girl to? Yeah. Right? And meditate. Okay, well, on what? What, what will you meditate on? Uh, some mantra? Some ditty? Chicken soup for the soul? Or the scriptures? Mm-hmm. And so Christians, Christians, I, I implore you, who is the greatest psychologist, psychiatrist ever, ever, ever in the history of humanity? If you don't answer Jesus, reconsider what it means to be a Christian and who Jesus is. Because he is the one who created us. He knows how we function. So then, yes, cling to every possible word he ever has said that the scriptures say and figure out how to meditate on that, retrain your thinking, and and watch what that does for you. Because when you go to the secular world, you may hit on some good advice, but it'll have already been in the Bible. Uh, but you are in, in a dangerous place when you it, are not. It was the It was the fear of death that, one of the things that contributed to Solomon's insanity Mm -hmm. instead of the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. The pitfall is the fear of anything but the Lord Mm -hmm. trusting anything but the Lord. Yeah, absolutely. That's interesting. You guys have highlighted some, some key points coming back around to that idea of, excuse me, uh, of the idea of, well, you know, don't give me a Bible verse because it doesn't work. I think there's this weird misconception that your transformation is going to happen instantly. Um, you know what I mean? This process of renewal of mind and this process of coming under the Lordship of Christ and Very good. being yeah. obedient to him. And then through that, seeing your healing and, and you know, that transformation happening. I don't know. I, I think I, I attribute it to our instant soup mentality as a culture. <clears throat> thinking, well, your Bible verse didn't work, so clearly Jesus doesn't work. Uh, without actually going through that process of, of you know, I think you you'd use the wording of new new pathways and pattern and thought patterns. Mm. You talked about that on right. Sunday, and Linda, you just talked about this. Like it's this process that you go through. Uh, it doesn't happen overnight. It is this continual process of of surrendering your life to the Lordship of Christ. Going, hey, you know, what? I feel really crappy right now. 
but I'm going to surrender that to Christ and be obedient to serving others, be obedient to being a blessing, being obedient to being the light of the world. Um, and I, it's important to get that, that like the, the, the scripture is not a band aid. Mm. Scripture is life changing and life change is a process. Right. Um, and so I, I don't know, that's just my thoughts on that as well. And I it's not a tablet. That. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, that take, take this Bible, I don't know what that, what the people are thinking when they think they take a Bible verse, read it or read it eight times or mm-hmm. whatever. And then yeah. it. No, no, this is, this is about becoming ingrained in your heart and mind. Mm. Mm. Also, there, <coughs> sorry. No, really ahead, simple example. If if you were eating takeaways for a year and you gained 30 yeah. pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> I know nothing about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to take you. Have a you it's not going <laughs> to take right, you yeah. 10 days to lose the weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eat right? some it, sticks, it's going to take you yeah. a long time to get rid of it. And yes, yeah. I do believe in instantaneous healing. Ap- mm-hmm, I, d- sure. I mm-hmm. definitely 100%. believe that. Um, I love the one story of Does that the... mean that God could instantly <laughs> lose our 30 pounds? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Right. for the wrong thing. Let's I, I am trusting. Let's stop, Let's stop and pray. I, I'm <laughs> still <laughs> trusting, yes. <laughs> we make you never know. <laughs> Tomorrow I might walk in here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, I remember one of the testimonies of the uh, one of the guys that plays in the band Corn that was completely yeah. oh, drug yeah. addicted and yep. said, you know, he had this moment with the Holy Spirit and and how he had this encounter um, with God. And later on, he actually said that he actually had uh, one or two moments of weakness where he did use drugs again. Mm-hmm. And it was it was a, a, pro- a process. He used drugs for 10, 15 years. Yeah. And sometimes, it's like you said, things, things take time. Sometimes things happen immediately. But if you had depression or suffered from it badly for two, three years... Um, it's a, it's a process and it's going to mm-hmm. be a renewal of the mind every single day and it's going to be prayer life and all of those things for 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 a while and um, yeah mm-hmm. my I would just like to add a second thing that personally what I found is yes sometimes we we're depressed and it's something we struggle with and but sometimes it stems from from something else and it's it can be something that we are clinging to something that's become an idol something that we really need to pinpoint mm-hmm. and go this is maybe the root of my problem because I do believe that a lot of the times it stems from one certain thing. Mm-hmm. And I remember personally in my life it was actually my husband that sits next to me because when we were dating he became everything to me and mm-hmm. I started he started becoming my idol. Tovi? Yes. Tovi? <laughs> it's easy to see why <laughs> this happened. I can't it's, see it. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about yeah. deception. We, we don't have enough time to get into that. You had to import a wife. You keep quiet. <laughs> getting just worse. Sorry, Lindy. Me. Sorry. It's getting worse. Continue. Continue. Your, share, your, your sharing is great. Keep right. going. Anyway, <laughs> we have no fun in this group. No, right. <laughs> anyway, long story short, we, we broke up. And the thing that I thought would be the worst thing in life happened to me. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I actually remember m- m- me gaining victory over my depression the moment when I realized that if I if I had to live life without him, the man that I believed that that was that God appointed for me and that we were meant to be together, when I let go of that, mm-hmm. when I went, I will stand alone even if I only have Jesus, even if I only have my relationship with Christ, that's okay. I'll be okay. Mm-hmm. If I don't have any of these other things that's dear to me and important to me, the moment I came to that realization or I could lay that down, yeah. Everything changed. Mm -hmm. Um, And to me, that was an amazing revelation where sometimes it's a few things that we need to pinpoint and start dealing with and Mm -hmm. lay ourselves down and die to ourselves. And it's not a nice process. It's not a fun process. (laughs) But man, like when you get the freedom that you get from that is just, it's it's incredible. And the Bible verses put away all idols. (laughs) (laughs) You made them an idol. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it was destroying you. Yeah. I think for for me, as I have gone through um, maybe counseling people through mental health and and depression and despair, uh, I've noticed how quickly everyone wants one quick fix, one fix, and one thing. There's got to be a solution out there. And so what is the solution? And half of my friends who've struggled with suicidal tendencies have found, okay, exercise, I got it. It releases endorphins, I feel good, changes my brain chemistry, and actually works. And so I'm going to do it until... You go away to the cottage and don't exercise for a week and just drink with your buddies, and now you're more depressed than ever and wanting yeah. to kill yourself. And you go like, "Oh my gosh!" Like, 
you, you can't have that one fix. But we love that mentality, and mm-hmm. I think that's actually where it comes. You gave me a Bible verse. It doesn't work because yeah. it's like <laughs> that, 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 that's not the one fix that that person wanted or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so we need to understand a the clear picture of, of health, like mental, physical, spiritual health, not just one thing. Like I found out my physical health and now I feel good mm-hmm. until you don't like the, your body anyways and you've been exercising and you're just still unhappy. And yeah. now what, you know? And so I think it's, it, they have to understand it's a holistic approach, first of all. Mm-hmm. The second thing is what I, I really get bugged about is hearing people say like, my count, I went to see a counselor. They, they didn't help me. It didn't help. And I went yeah. to see a pastor and I sat with him and it didn't help me. Pastor Tom couldn't help us, you know, or whatever. <laughs> I went to see, you know, like you gave me that Bible verse. It doesn't help, whatever. It's like, first of all, people are trying to help you. You actually have to help yourself. Yeah, that's like, the truth. I, I, that frustrates me beyond belief that if you're trying to get some help, go get the help. But they're not the solution. They can maybe give you some good counsel. The, mm-hmm. So like the scriptures do, gives us really good counsel. But we have to get off our butt and actually do something to help ourselves. Truth. And all the rest of the time, we're looking at everyone else going, oh, the church isn't really helping me and reaching out to me today. Well, they don't know that you're sick. Like So yeah. ask for prayer, right? Yeah. I, I, I think sometimes that, that wallowing in self-pity is, is mm-hmm. we just rest in the wallow and think, Everyone else should be helping me, and they're not helping. And I tried that once, and it didn't help. And you're like, "What do you do? Like, get off your butt and actually help yourself a little bit." Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if that's harsh, but I found like when I actually have, I have to reach out to my close group of eight, eight guys and say, "I am struggling with with depression this this month. I'm not doing well." And then they they quickly jump into action, and they're amazing, and they're yeah. asking me to go for lunch and praying for me and and reaching out and do, doing what they can. Um, and sending me Bible verses, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is right. so helpful. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the last thing I'll quickly say before uh, is I, I think sometimes we have to recognize it's a hard issue that we're dealing with. Yeah. There's yeah. The, the problem with, with our, our, our perspective is our, our broken hearts and, mm-hmm. and our broken humanity. And until we realize that the, the depravity doesn't start all out in the world and everything going on in the world, it actually starts right here. Yeah. And it's our broken nature, our broken heart, and the only one that can bring shalom, wholeness, unity, peace is God. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes it's just get on. Have you actually got on your knees and prayed for your own, <laughs> yeah. your own health right now and your own head and your heart? And I, I don't believe that people do that. I mm-hmm. believe they struggle. They'll see a counselor, but I, I don't know if people believe in the power of prayer. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I would recommend maybe that be the, yeah. the starting point. Focus on our hearts first. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, there's there's an internal logic to everything you're saying because you know you hear that thing people say as we've been saying many times. Oh, Bible verse didn't work. Bible verse didn't work. Well, it's because. You you can't you can't convince yourself by just cha- just changing your thoughts. Changing your thoughts is extremely important, mm-hmm. but those thoughts have to be rooted in action. You know, I'll give you a, a really ex- a simple and funny example. So, in the upstairs bathroom in the church, yep, there was place. no cabinet above the toilet. Yeah. That's right. That's <laughs> at right. one time, <laughs> I know where you're going with that. At yeah, one yeah. time, there was no cabinet above the toilet, and mm. now there is a cabinet above the toilet, and I Ouch. know. My head knows that. I've told my, <laughs> I have told my mind. I have told it the script, the yeah. truth, yeah. Yeah. the truth that there is a cabinet. <laughs> but I'll tell you, I've hit my head on that cabinet five he, or six I times. I can vouch for this. <laughs> five or six, six times coming out of the bathroom. Okay, so I have to, and and I'll give you a scripture for this after. But I have to not just tell my head that, but I have to create new action. Mm-hmm. Change postures because if I have the same posture, I'm hitting my head. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So I have to do, as Nathan just said, mm-hmm. I have to do different things. Yeah. And there's a great. I'll just give you a quick passage to reinforce this. Right. The root uh, scripture from the book of Colossians says, "Therefore, as you've received Christ Jesus, your Lord, okay, you've received it, you believed it, but now you got to walk in Him, as it says, rooted and built up in Him, established in the faith." So there's. There's action words there. Yeah. You have to do something different because your body doesn't believe your thoughts yet. Mm-hmm. Your, my body didn't believe what I was thinking, yeah. that there's a, there's a shelf there, and you're going to hit your head if <laughs> you don't. Right. Like, I had to convince my body as well. Mm, absolutely. When, when you're being sexually promiscuous, don't be surprised that you're struggling with anxiety and depression. Yeah. When you're pursuing money at all costs, when you're pursuing pleasure at all costs, when your life is 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 rooted, is, is got a stronghold of sin in your life, thank the Lord for anxiety and depression. I pray for that 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 that, that people will be unhappy and miserable when they pursue sin, mm-hmm. because yeah. 
if yeah. they will, you know, and then and then when they turn their hearts towards the Lord, that the joy of the Lord would flood their hearts. You 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 cannot keep sinning and and ask for a Bible verse or medicine or anything mm. to make you happy. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and so what, well, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Is is it chemical? Is it psychological? Is it spiritual? I don't care. Deal with all of them. But for crying out loud, you have to deal with the sin, because all the all the counseling and all the the the, the medicine is not going to override the fact that you violated the essence of who you are as created by a holy God with your sin in your life. Stop the porn. Stop the all that stuff. Get help for all those things, because as long as you've got all that. The anxiety and the depression is a gift from God to you to get you to stop going in that direction. Don't you love that Jesus, every time he healed, before he healed someone, he said, your sins are forgiven. Yeah. <laughs> Or he said, repent. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I always love that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it ties in with what you said. Absolutely. Psalm, Psalm 32 says, when I did not confess my sin, I was worn out from crying all day long. Day and night you punished me, Lord. My strength was completely drained as moisture is dried up by the summer heat. Then I confess my sins to you. I did not conceal my wrongdoings. I decided to confess them to you, and you forgave all my sins. I am not saying that all depression is a result of sin, but I'm telling you, there's a whole lot of people who are living very, and particularly promiscuous lives, and wondering why this pursuit of intimacy and a relationship isn't bringing them joy and is bringing them anxiety, because you're not doing it the way God created you to do it. Mm-hmm. Let us help you. Had so- Please let us help you. had someone in my life group once say to me, uh, uh, you know, whenever I'm doing really poorly, God and I are so close. Like, I'm always talking to him, and <laughs> it's so good. And then when I do good, I put him on a shelf, and I hate that I do that. And I said, so what do you want? And he said, well, pray that something real bad happens to me. <laughs> <laughs> he, this is true. He said, yeah, pray yeah. that something real bad happens to me. Or that I just smarten the heck up. <laughs> you didn't say the heck, but you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, because I'm really frustrated that I'm so uh, uh, so arrogant to kind of go like, now I can go my own way. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden you fall back on your face, and whether it's despair or yeah. it's Solomon's words of going, well, everything's meaningless again, yeah. <laughs> because you've tr- gone your own way. You've mm-hmm. par- you're not partnering with Christ anymore. And I love that, that wording of just recognizing our, our <laughs> sinful nature and going, maybe I do need a moment of despair. And maybe I do need the, the battle to recognize that I, I can't do it alone again. And just to recognize again, oh yeah, I've put all my trust back in myself, back in my own happiness, my own pleasure, my own selfish gratification. I can't do this again. So I, I, just echoing and agreeing with uh, what, what you guys are saying. There, there's, there's you know, you know, either something bad happened or I smarten up and I would say, or put yourself out in a situation, take a risk for the Lord. Put yourself, sell everything you have and, and, and give it to the poor or go on the mission field or take a risk, you know, doing something where if God doesn't come through, you're in trouble and it will totally change. You you might still be anxious as in like, oh, God, you got to come through for me, but it'll be an anxious that builds life in you, like 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 stress on uh, for an athlete versus the kind that'll, that'll kill you. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me today uh, in this conversation. It's good. It's very good. And uh, to our listeners, thanks so much for joining us every week and continue to send encouragement and, uh, yeah, just letting us know that you're listening. It's uh, always exciting to hear that. And uh, we would love to connect with you if you've never connected with us. Uh, So jump on our website, jump on the app, and fill out that Connect card. We'll talk to you next time on Digging Deeper.